hello and welcome to this edition of Prophecy in the News. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Dr. Kevin Clarkson, joined today by Pastor Billy Crone. Hello, Bill. Hi, Kevin. How you doing? I am great. Thank you for coming in today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always, uh, always a pleasure. Well, you've got a new resource, and we just kind of want to talk about uh, all, the, all the studies you did in your church on the days of Noah. You yeah. did a major examination. I think you said almost 40 weeks on creation and forward into the flood of Noah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we uh, did uh, the whole gamut on uh, creation versus evolution, a 42-week study, The Witness of Creation. And uh, one of the chunks we did specifically on In the Days of Noah and uh, took a look at that and, uh, and believe it or not, does have to do with the uh, prophetic issues. Uh, you know, Peter, prop- in the last right. days, scoffers would come, right? But what would they scoff about? They would scoff about the flood, about the time when God first judged the planet. And unfortunately, right. I believe we're fully in those days that people are scoffing. Not only God judged the planet once, but the point is, if he judged the planet once and he warns he's going to do it again, you might want to pay attention. The problem is our world has been blinded by the lie of evolution and they act and they say and they insinuate that there's no evidence of this flood, God's judgment, because what was the flood? It wasn't just some guys trying to no one his family trying to survive, uh, you know, in a boat. Right. What? Why did the whole thing happen? Because of sin, because of wickedness. God said he judged his planet. It grieved his heart that he had made mankind things that got so messed up and twisted. And the scripture says, he, unfortunately, he's going to do it again. Yeah, a judgment of God. May I just uh, read that passage out of Peter? Yeah, sure. I like to just uh, kind of set the table sometimes with uh, scripture. And so I'm going to have to pull my little clip apart here. But I want to pick up on a couple of things you alluded to when okay. you quoted it. This is Second Peter 3, folks. And... Uh, Peter saying, I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Be mindful of the words spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of the apostles of the Lord, of our Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. So men are very self-willed, self-desired, yeah. and saying, where is the promise of his coming? It's almost a mockery. Yeah. And then here it is. <clears throat> For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they have were from the beginning of the creation and if you'll just hold this thought i'll get back to that that's the idea of uniformitarianism which right. is kind of a plank of evolution and then it says this they willingly are ignorant of yeah by the word of god the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished and the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Yeah. So Peter's talking about two judgments, the old water judgment mm-hmm. and the coming fire judgment. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as you mentioned, let's, let's, let's even talk about evolution creation because, you know, they say all things continue as they were from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, tell me what some of your research and findings have been uh, with regards to, you know, no evidence for a worldwide flood, you said. Well, what about that? Well, and that's that's what's sad is uh, people, unfortunately, I think, parrot the media and the secular educational system without uh, investigating the facts. And that's what I we agree. did. Uh, and uh, the uh, as you said, uh, evolution is based on uniformitarianism. Right. As it was today, it's always been that way and extrapolate back supposedly millions of years ago. And and that's what created. No one. The other one, uh, the creation point is catastrophism. Right. Right. And so uh, one catastrophe can produce rapid results. Uh, it doesn't take millions exactly. of years. And that's what you see when it comes to the flood. Why is the topography in the shape that it's in? It came from the flood. This wasn't over millions of years. It's, it's crazy. And then people say, well, there's no evidence of the, of, of the flood. Are you, whoa, w- yes, there is. Yes, there is. Right? We, we actually document not only with, uh, again, video clips, interviews, actual pictures, photographs, archaeological digs, the whole nine <laughs> yards. And uh, uh, of the evidence that this planet was truly judged completely, completely submerged uh, in a flood. It's all over the place. Uh, some of that evidence we find that, uh, you know, we have sandstone that's all over the earth. It's right. sandstone that comes from sand. Right? Sand. Which, right, it sand. comes from around but the ocean. It's in the middle of the continents. Yeah. How did it get thousands of miles away from ocean lines? Well, something moved a massive amount of sand, right. huge, massive, cotton white ways bringing that stuff in uh, you know like what one guy had said well okay wait a second if there really was a worldwide flood that destroyed uh all 
land animals, air breathing land animals that were not in the ark. They've known his family. Um, then you would expect to find billions of dead things buried in rock layers all over the world. And we well, do. guess what we find? Billions of dead things buried in rock layers all over the world. Every time you pick up a shovel, and you, where do you think all these dead bodies came from? And don't we find uh, mineral, uh, fossils, seashells, and, and uh, sea life fossils on top of the highest mountains oh, in the world? And, and we expose that. We show actual uh, uh, pictures uh, and things of that nature. That's what uh, I love, by the way, about your presentation. Yeah. You, you always bring uh, a lot of visual video, video media um, that just really enhances it. Yeah, well, and to me, that's it's the scoffing society, right? Yeah. Because they'll, they'll accuse you of like, oh, uh, that's a spurious documentary. You got that from joshmo.com. We can't Joe trust Schmo. that. Well, I'm sorry. When you see the actual interview, when you see the person actually saying this, when you see the actual photograph, that's not photoshopped. That's right. Okay. What do you, what do you got to say about that? In fact, we, we uh, share from secular archaeologists, they admit, we share some powerful interviews, and they freely admit, and this is their words, not mine. They said in their... Secular research, archaeology, what they have discovered in their own community <laughs> that they are, quote, covering up as much as they're digging up over yeah, the last 150 phrase. years covering up of archaeology. Of and it's not an up. open system. It's not like people think it is, oh, they find something. You know, this is science. It's supposed to be tried, demonstrated, and it, here, here's the facts, and you deal with it and adjust your, quote, theory accordingly. That's not the system. Uh, but go back to that evidence. Okay, a worldwide flood. Sure. All right, we find billions of dead things all over the place. Where do you think the billions of carcasses came from? That's right. Oh, and by the way, uh, they're massive not just upheavals. Massive upheavals. I mean, something doesn't just lay down and die a natural death, and there be a fossil left because the microbes and the insects and the scavengers absolutely will, will basically pick it clean, and then it, you know what I mean. The bones will rot out in the sun. Yeah, the, the rot out in the sun and... There has to be a, an instantaneous burial. Right. In fact, we see that. It's not just massive amounts, billions of things buried, but we know it was a rapid burial. Yeah. Like a giant catastrophe overwhelmed them. Uh, because we even find uh, fossilized fish giving birth to fish. They wow. died in mid-birth. We find fossilized fish swallowing another fish in mid-bite. We find things that you would think would decompose very rapidly, like jellyfish. Not just a few jellyfish. Miles yeah, they have no skeletal structure, so right. how were they perfectly, preserved? Exactly, perfectly fossilized, on and on because and on. Because of an instantaneous catastrophe. Yeah, but you had mentioned uh, the uh, mountains. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Edmund Hillary, when he went up to the top of Mount Everest, uh, about just over 29,000 feet, when he hit the 26,000 feet level, puts his pick in there, we document this, <laughs> uh, he starts, he, he, he goes into uh, seashells. Tons of them. Layers them, and then he finds seashells all the way up for the next three thousand feet. And he kept saying she sells seashells by the mountaintop. Yeah, and then we've been cursed with that <laughs> saying ever since. But no, but <laughs> but uh, uh, but no, seriously. So excuse me, what, not just seashells, but what are seashells for three thousand feet doing on the top of Mount Everest? Not only that, they find like in the Andes Mountains, they find yes. whales from South America. Right, they find whales. Whales. 13,000 feet level. Wow, I've never uh, heard about and that. And Mount Andes. I, last time I checked, uh, whales don't walk too good. Let no. alone are able to go down to Walmart or wherever to get some hiking gear and make it up a mountain uh, before they expire. Uh, wow. Excuse What are whales doing on top? What is sea life doing on tops of mountains? Yes. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, but then the scoffers, again, they'll say, well, okay, well, uh, the phrase they use is this. They say, well, that's an anomaly. And really, that's their, that, that's their way of saying, well, this doesn't fit our theory. That's right. But I put a label on it, and so we'll hide it away. No, you got to deal with the facts. That's their fancy way of saying, I can't explain this. It, exactly, right? <laughs> it's it, an enigma. Yeah, exa- <laughs> same thing, exactly. Oh, but, well, but that's, that's fascinating. Now, you know, two things occur to me, and you may touch on this in your presentation. Uh, they talk about the geological column, yeah. which is, you know, the stratas of rocks. Yeah. And to my understanding, unless it's been overturned, uh, it's only found perfectly in the textbooks because never anywhere in the world is there a perfect real replica uh-huh. of the geological column. It's always out of order and even older strata are on top of like they're after, you know, the newer strata and, uh-huh. and it's never matched like it's supposed to. Yeah, you, and you're absolutely right and we bring that out too. There is no place on the whole planet that you will find a fully formed geological column. The only place that you'll find a fully formed is in the textbook or the nifty animation that they show the students. Right. That's it. It's not in reality. It's kind of like the global warming model. <coughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's in the, as you say, the 
the yeah. technological presentation, but it's not existing uh, really in reality. But I- exactly, and and then again, with the what you do find though buried in the dirt is they're not nice, neat. You know, like they say, well, down here was the Jurassic period, and over here was the etc. You know, excuse me. In the periods that they say only mankind, according to their theory, according should the only theory. be at the top. We find human remains at the bottom, over here, over here, over here, mixed up. We 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 demonstrate that. Bill, uh, that's an anomaly. <laughs> well, and and I guess that just solves it, doesn't it? No, yeah. it doesn't. You, you know. And, uh, but, uh, uh, what you also find don't fit my theory. We'll move the facts aside. I- exactly. Hang on to the theory at all costs. Yeah. Because with this theory, we don't need a God. Well, and Peter, I believe also gives the mode of why these people are doing this. Cause, uh, you know, we're just scraping literally the surface of what's contained in the study yes. of all the evidence that God judges planet one time. Let, let me talk about your study for a minute to okay. our viewers. Hold <laughs> that thought. Cause I want to jump right back on it. But I don't want to forget to tell people, if they're interested in more about this, this is called In the Days of Noah uh, by Pastor Billy Crone. And it's dealing with ancient technology, uh, giants, and Noah's Ark. And some of that has to do with the atmosphere of early creation and things before the flood, the canopy yeah. burst. But uh, you've got on this resource, I believe you told me, uh, 12 studies. Yeah. And folks, you can get this for thirty nine ninety five if you'll go to our website. Or call the 800 number on your screen. And of course, our website's www.prophecyofthenews.com. But uh, take advantage of that, shipping and handling. It'd be a great study. I think these first chapters of Genesis are not only foundational to the rest of all the Bible, but they're some of the most important chapters. If we don't get started right, we don't get our theology right the rest of the way. Yeah. Well, if I, if I can't trust page one of the Bible... Yeah. Why trust page two or page 200 or page anything? Or even as we talked earlier, if, if Genesis 3 is not true, how do I know John 3 is true? Exactly. Which says you must be born again. Yeah. Jesus, so, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And, and I think that's also what Peter is saying in the New Testament, uh, is that, uh, listen, if we find evidence of the first judgment, Noah's flood, then when God says he's going to do it again, you might want to pay attention. And that's, that's right. really the theme of the study. Unfortunately, what he says there, the word that he uses is willingly ignorant. When you do the research and we bring it out in this study, uh, there was so much evidence that this planet truly was judged, uh, that there was a pre-flood society that was completely wiped out. Okay, we haven't even touched that yet. Yes. Um, that uh, you would have to be willingly ignorant. And he gives the motive. He says the reason why is because they want to follow their ungodly desires. These people will literally stare. They'll hide it. They'll cover it up. They'll pack it away. They'll keep it from the public. They'll call it an enigma, an anomaly, and just scoot it away. Why? Because they don't want to come to the conclusion Willingly that this brings ignorant. you. There is a God. You are accountable. And he's the one that makes up the rules. You need to get busy doing what he says. And that's the bottom line. And that's what it is. They want to be their own God. That's right. They want to follow their ungodly desires. We will not have this man to rule over us. Luke 19 in a parable. Yeah, absolutely. And the Lord sends his armies and destroys those folks. And so he sent his flood. Yeah. Um, You know, um, I don't know if you got into it on this. We could chase a lot of things on this. I want to get to creation as well. But... um, Did you did you bring up about Mount St. Helens formation? Absolutely. You would mention catastrophism or yes, you, you, you put the syllable. Yeah. In a different place. But yeah, but the uh, idea of major catastrophes mm-hmm. rather than a slow drip, drip, drip rather than a river eating the Grand Canyon out over eons and millions and millions of days and nights and sunsets. Yeah. Uh, we saw Mount St. Helens create petrified forests in two weeks. Yeah. Same kind of forest over in Yosemite. No, Yellowstone Park, mm. that the National Park sign said took millions of years to form. Yeah. We saw it in two weeks before our eyes. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I call that God's nanny nanny boo boo <laughs> in like Jesus' that. name because uh, yeah. when Mount St. Helens blew, that proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that it does not take millions of years uh, to have our topography in the shape it's in, including uh, things like the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon was not carved by the Colorado River. Yep. Uh, they know that, uh, and uh, it's impossible when you look at the facts. And again, they, the geological column is not right in the Grand Canyon. Th- exactly, and, and, but even with that, what you find is, and we brought this out, there's video clips of uh, Mount St. Helens, what it did, but when the, that mountain blew, it, it blocked up what was called the Toodle River and uh, the mud from all the mudslides, uh-huh. and it, it began to build up and build up and build up, and this huge dam, right? Well, uh, and then it had all that layers of ash, right? Right. Uh, from blown and it had finally settled into layers and w- finally after several days that dam finally burst and it cut through all that 
and in a massive scale, it carved, and we show the pictures, it carved a 140th to the scale of the Grand Canyon in a very short amount of time. It so did something not, about 140th the size or, you know, 2% yeah. of the size, 2.5% of the size of the Grand Canyon. Yeah. It, Smaller scale, but same catastrophism. Exactly, including the stratigraphy, the layers. Wow. Because these layers are, because what they say is they try to, well, it takes, you know, it takes millions of years and the dust settles and here uh -huh. comes this later. Millions of years and this, no, it doesn't. It's called hydrologic sorting. Well, and this easy is easy for you to say. Right. <laughs> and uh, basically, I, I tell people all the time, here's an experiment. Go in your backyard, grab some dirt, uh, put it in a, a plastic water bottle, whatever, fill it about halfway, fill the rest up with, with water, shake it up really good. Yeah. Put it on your counter. When you get up the next day, it will naturally be uh, stratified in layers based on density. Yeah, the, the heaviest settles to the bottom. Did it take millions of years? No, that was overnight. Yeah. And that's what we saw with Mount St. Helens. It doesn't take millions <laughs> of years for these layers to form. Uh, it can happen very rapidly. And we know it happens very rapidly uh, with that. But but one thing that they'll scoff about uh, that I've heard and we dealt with in great detail is they'll say, okay, give me a break. If there really was this whole society it's pre-flood society. There you go. And the whole society was completely wiped out. I mean, we're talking cities. We're talking people. You think we'd Technologies find. Technologies too. Right. We, you think we'd find some remains of that. Well, guess what we do? And we <laughs> document on video with pictures. Uh, guess what they still find in the oceans? They find underwater cities in the ocean. Uh, there's some amazing footage that we got uh, off, the, off of Japan. Yoganumi, uh, the monuments down there. Th really? This is man-made monuments huge and it's not just off the coast of japan it's off of cuba it's off of india in the atlantic ocean buried six thousand feet down they find six thousand feet columns buried down columns obviously man-made what's that from there is there's so many underwater artifacts that they are trying to keep from us there the the remains of noah's pre-flood society it's down there Amazing. but they refuse to bring it up not only that we find uh, uh, artifacts uh, in coal, right? Right. Coal, I believe, was formed at the time of the flood, and it, you can actually uh, uh, create coal, uh, and it doesn't take millions of years. It just takes the right amount of heat, pressure, uh -huh. vegetation. And of course, you put it from a flood perspective. There'd be a lot of vegetation getting yes, squished in a global. Be an enormous amount of pressure. Absolutely, pressure and heat, and so you can coalify something in a short amount of time. But what we find, evolutionists would say, no, it takes 300 million years or many. To, for coal to form, period. Well, even if you wanted to believe that, we know it can't be true because we find human artifacts in there. And these are artifacts in from coal. in coal from Noah's day. I'm talking artifacts. What kind the of artifacts are you describing? Artifacts, and we got the actual documentation, video clips, the pictures. They find jewelry, gold jewelry embedded in coal. How did that happen? They find vases embedded in coal. How did that happen? Human vases, very intricate, very ornate, carved, and stuff of that nature. Fascinating. Uh, metal, ba uh, also iron pots, <laughs> cookery, silverware, things of that nature in coal. How did that get in coal if that's supposed to be millions of years? It was formed at the flood. These are yeah. actual remnants. We find uh, porcelain floors. We find dolls. We find all kinds of things buried in the dirt, buried even in coal that are remnants from Noah's flood. The remnants of that society is either underwater or still buried in the dirt. But these guys, and again, this is their own words, and we even, again, interview these guys. They, and their words, not mine, their own camp, evolution, is covering up as much as they're digging up. Yes. And I, I shared with the, on, on the study, I shared a, a good visual. <clears throat> and I said, uh, how many of you guys watched that uh, Indiana Jones movie, the first one? Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. So they found the Ark, right? And it, according to the movie, right? Yeah. And uh, so at the end, after this amazing, incredible discovery, what did they end up doing with it? Archived it. Archived it, and they show up in the bowels of a government right, building. The right. guys carrying it off, right? You it, know, stacked up with a gazillion other crates, right? Just like it, it. And that's the scene, right? Yes. That's the scene that just blows your mind at the end of the movies. And then it's like a gut wrencher. It's like, oh, you got to be kidding me! And so they they haul it away, but they pan back with the and you realize, wait a second, there's a billion. That's just these, one yeah. find that they're crating away from us, okay? That's and then it makes you, of course, the teaser at the end of the movie. What else are they hiding? That's from right. Me? That's not make believe. Yeah. In the own industry, they admit this is exactly what's going on. One guy uses the term Smithsonian gate. And based on his research, mm. these guys are hiding stuff away and or destroying evidence. We even share oh. uh, in our studies people, and these are evolutionists. This is their own camp. Okay. So you can't say Christians, you're being, uh, in their own camp, 
uh, that they are escort. If they find something that disagrees with evolution, they are either fired, they are let go, they are blackballed, and or we even have one guy who he was escorted off his archaeological dig at gunpoint. Seriously. And refu- and th- and these are secular. Yeah. A- and they admit this is not an open system. This is not science. These guys are hiding this from you. They do not want this to get out. That God judges planet once, and when he says he's going to do it again, you better pay attention. You know the truth will always win out. Absolutely. And these guys just don't get that. It reminds me of Romans chapter 1 where it says men suppress or smother the truth in unrighteousness yeah. about the creation of God. Oh, yeah. Let's step back from the flood a minute and go to the creation. You, you talked to <coughs> me about ID, which is a, you know, for intelligent design. Yeah. What are some of the, the things that you discussed on here about intelligent design, proofs of a creator? Well, we, we uh, on this particular study, some of the amazing uh, things that we find buried in the dirt is with some intelligence, uh, and that's some of the ancient technology that we find. Uh, you look in the, the scripture, I know it's, this is not intelligent design, but per this study, okay. um, the study, uh, you look at the Genesis account, and uh, prior to the flood, these people were super duper intelligent, which is the opposite of evolution. It is. They say the further you go back in time, you should be apes dragging your right. knuckles. That's not what we find buried in the dirt, and that's not what we find in the biblical account. These people were super duper intelligent. Yeah. Right? You got Tubal Cain, you got Jubal, and out of the blue, they. Metalworks. Metalworks. Uh, music. Music, yeah. Right? I, I can't even build a shed. This guy invents <laughs> metallurgy, and they go yes. off and build cities, and they. And it's, it's this mu- is they, Genesis 4 and 5, by yeah, the way. Exactly. So, these so the scripture says that the further you go back, the smarter mankind was before sin, obviously degrades and etc and that's what we also find buried in there we find ancient technology and again we bring out the videos bring out this things in fact one guy they, they found this uh, uh, in the ocean uh, this mechanism that uh, does ab- addition subtraction the whole nine yards like a, a calculator and their own words secular guys said hey if this society did not get interrupted it would not be uh, uh, unreasonable to say could they have put a man on the moon by 300 AD wow it's so advanced technology. Wow. We find buried in the dirt ancient batteries. We find uh, all kinds of things. And, but again, it, evolution has no answer for it, but it fits the biblical account. These are the leftover remnants of the pre-flood society. Very smart people, yes. incredible people. And then we have a huge section that deals with what kind of a society that was uh, in the pre-flood society. The earth was different. You had most likely a canopy that was surrounding the earth that was blocking out the harmful UV rays. Right. We know tapping into uh, amber with air bubbles, uh-huh. which would be formed at the time of the flood, that the earth had a higher oxygen content, double the air pressure. And so when you put all that together. More energy, more health. More hair, and it produces giantism. Uh-huh. And that also explains. And some what, of those fossils were larger. Huge. And we document uh, all this but, stuff. You know. Everything got bigger prior to the flood. People got bigger. Yep. And we document that. Bugs got bigger, plants got bigger, animals got I've bigger. I've seen uh, beavers and other animals that were, you know, huge. Well, the trees, <coughs> we, we document this. One stump that they found, fossilized stump, created the flood, God's first judgment. Uh, based on the circumference, that tree would have been 1,000 feet tall. Oh, my. But guess what? We find beavers, uh, the fossil remains we share, uh, eight feet long. And yeah, it makes that's sense. Well, I'm talking about right. So you got to have bigger beavers. Don't have that boy chew down chew bigger that big trees, tree. <laughs> right? Uh, you got uh, uh, dragonflies <laughs> today, about four or five inch wingspan. Two or three. Prior feet. to the flood, huge. You know, some of they found yes. they said uh, uh, up to five feet. In, up uh, to five. Can you feet. imagine that hitting your windshield going down the road? Uh, can you imagine that thing coming to your picnic? <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of which, cockroaches, grasshoppers, they find fossilized remains two feet long. Huge man found an armadillo. An armadillo, fossilized armadillo, and this was outside Peru, we documented it, uh, the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. Wow. Everything was huge. Giantism, all kinds yeah. of neat things. And then, again, the scripture talks about that. Well, and, and you used the term to, to our readers or our viewers that may find this new, um, the idea of the canopy was mm-hmm. that, you know, the Bible says it did not rain before the flood. That's another right. reason people were scoffing while Noah preached they'd never seen rain. Yeah. There's this canopy that, is almost a greenhouse effect. The earth is flourishing with the plants. Yeah. And so not only does he let the rain fall, he opens up the fountains of the deep. And yeah. he just, the, the catastrophism and everything else destroys that early atmosphere. Yeah. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. And again, that's an important point. The water didn't just come from above, it came from below. Yes. And we document that and go deep into the Hebrew. It was horrific. Nobody was going to survive this. Anything outside the ark, air breathing land, you're, you're done. Yeah. It and, was very tell violent. Me, did your research lead you to. Uh, to what I have, have heard that 
perhaps the mountains before the flood were not as tall as today. Uh -huh. So yeah. for them to, for it says the water rose above the mountain peaks. We're right. not talking five or six miles of water. Yeah. If the, but as it, as, as all this is going on and the fountains are breaking up and as it's still, it's still settling down to this day, uh -huh. but it pushes these mountains up. Yeah. And we, we know that that not only was recent, but we know that that had to be done while the mountains uh, were still soft sediment. Well, they had the, again, the marine fossils on top. Marine fossils on top, but you also find buckled ridges, right? right. This is another thing evolution can't explain. They think, oh, nice, neat layers. No, it's not. Not at all. You have complete, cur how do you yeah. explain cur curved rock? You can't bend. Right. It does, but it's not just rocks, and it's not just hillsides. We're talking whole mountains. It looks like they're just an accordion. Something on a massive, mega, mega planetary-wide scale. Yeah rearrange the real estate on this planet and it only fits the flood but you mentioned you know the scoffers at the first time and the, the rain possibly they were like yeah we never seen rain they're scoffing you really think about it we're it's the same thing today it is right how they must have laughed at noah yes. and he's gonna say hey you're gonna see this stuff come from the sky and it's called rain or whatever and you've never seen it and but you better get in this boat because this is the only way out of the mess same thing today what do we say as christians hey you better get an ark of Jesus Christ, right. because one day you're going to see come from the sky. He's going to come with his angels and, and scoffers, scoffer. right? And they, it's the same thing being repeated today. But every time you see a scoffer, you see another sign that he's coming. Absolutely, and brother. This is fascinating, and our time is out. So we'll we'll do another program and visit some more things. But Pastor, it's great to have you. Let me just close us by saying you mentioned it. Come to the ark that is Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, First Peter three mentions that Jesus is that ark. Eight people were saved uh, going into Noah's Ark. You can be saved if you'll come to Christ. And God said, come into the Ark. And you come into Christ. Call on him today if you never have, and he will save you. We keep looking up till he comes again. Hello there. This is Linda Kay, and I have some very exciting news for you. If you could not attend the Orlando 2015 conference, then I have the next best thing. Just go to our website, www.prophecyinthenews.com, and click on the live streaming. Once you do that, you'll be able to view in your home for 30 days the speakers in the main ballroom. But what if you want to hear all the speakers? Well, I have the solution for that too. Once you purchase that ticket, then you'll be entitled to purchase a complete DVD set of the conference that retails for $149.95 for the discounted price of $99.95. And when you do that, you'll be able to hear and see all the speakers. So be sure that you get on our website, click on that live streaming button, purchase that, purchase the DVDs, and as always, God bless you, and forever remember, keep looking up. <laughs>